Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spectrum. It is a new year, and we're so glad that you joined us. Well, before we sing some songs, I have a couple of jokes for you, because I know you love my jokes. All right, number one, why should you put the calendar in the freezer December 31st? Think, think, think. Why should you put the calendar in the freezer December 31st? To start off the new year in a cool way. Yeah, I know. Okay, that was a groaner. I get it. I get it. Okay, I got another one. Why did the man sprinkle sugar on his pillow on New Year's Eve? Can you guess? It's kind of like the other one. You'll probably get this one. Anybody got a guess? He wanted to start the year off with sweet dreams. Yeah, I know. That one was kind of funny. Okay, I got one last one for you. You ready? What is my favorite thing to say on New Year's Day? What is my favorite thing to say on New Year's Day? I can remember last year like it was yesterday. Yeah, that one's good. You, you like that one. You can do that one for your parents. All right, well, you know what? We're going to start the new year off singing some songs. So up on your feet, let's sing with the band, and then I'll be back in a little bit. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spectrum. Get on your feet and get ready to praise the Lord. Turn my morning into dancing and I can smile again cause I Joy that 
into gladness. You turn my sorrow into joy. And now I'm singing and I'm dancing. And I will shout for joy. You turn my sadness into gladness. You turn my Great singing, everybody. Good job. Well, I have one more joke. Do you think you can put up with one more joke from me? Yes, you can. Don't be shaking your head at me. Okay, one more joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? Abby. Abby who? Happy New Year! It's a new year. You can try that one on your parents, too. Okay, I promise I will stop doing jokes now. Well, I bet your family had lots of traditions over Christmas and New Year's too. I know we did. There was one tradition that we just started 
I think we started it last year, that's really fun. And I actually got it at a staff party I went to where we played this game, it's like past the parcel, and it's all wrapped up in like saran wrap that you put on sandwiches, and you hide little presents in it, and then you go around the circle and different people have to unwrap the saran wrap, and you get to keep some of the little presents that are in there. And so we started doing it as a family on Christmas Eve, and it's so fun. So that's one of our traditions that we want to try and keep. Well, a tradition is something that we do every year, and we keep repeating it because it's really fun. Do you guys know what is a tradition that our church does every January? It's something that we think is really good, it's kind of fun, and we've done it every January for a long time. Can anybody guess? We do sometimes read the Bible, you're right, sometimes we've read the Bible right through, but that's not this one. What's this tradition that we do every January? What did you say? Right, we have a week of prayer, exactly. And it's when we set a time for, it's actually a week at the beginning of a new year to really focus on God and to pray. And that's what we're gonna do this year. And the reason we do that is because we wanna focus on God right at the beginning of the year and we wanna try and develop a really good habit of praying. So that's why we do it. So this coming week, as in tomorrow, we're actually gonna be starting our week of prayer. So I wanna talk just a little bit today about prayer. Now I have something that I wanna show you. It's gonna be a puzzle. And you're gonna need a pair of scissors and you're gonna need a piece of paper. And since I don't have any kids here to help me with this, I asked Vicki, who I work with, to come and help me. So Vicki, come on over. Now, for this craft, you take a piece of paper. So you guys can do this at home. This is a regular piece of paper, and I just cut it in half. And because you're only going to need half of this piece of paper. And you're going to need a pair of scissors. So I'm going to give Vicki this. I'm just going to put it over here for you. And you guys can get it at home. And what I want you to do is I want you to take the piece of paper. Actually, let me take it back for one second. And you're going to make some cuts in it. Almost like, I was going to say making a snowflake, but not quite. But kind of something like that. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a piece of paper that looks like this. And what I did was I just took the paper and glued it onto this greeny blue piece just so you could see it better. But basically it's just that piece of paper. I made some cuts in it and I produced something like this. So I'm going to put it right here and Vicki you can start anytime. Okay. And you can put some cuts in the paper and see if you can make something that looks like that. Okay. What do you think? Do you think she'll be able to do it? It's, it's not hard once you know the secret but it's a little bit hard if you don't know the secret. I wonder if any of you know how to do it. Hmm. I know it's a little tricky. It is a little tricky. Yeah, it is a little tiny bit tricky. Hmm. When I first did it, I went, oh, okay. And I got some people in my family to do it, and they were a little bit fooled. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> but see, Vicky's very smart. <laughs> so if Vicky can't figure it out, don't feel bad if you can't figure well, it this out. Is, this it's is just, a little tough. <laughs> it's just one of those things, you know. So um, there's one thing I forgot to tell Vicky. And, and the other thing is you can get your parents to try this at home. You can fool your parents with it. So um, you can ask somebody for help if you want. Is there anybody that you would want to ask for help? Well, I could ask Juliana, but she's in school. Right. Mm, I could ask Jeff. Oh, yeah, I can't ask Jeff, actually. He's in meetings today. Oh, that won't work. Uh, okay. I don't know. I'd have to think about that, I guess. All right. Well, why don't we let Vicki take the paper and the scissors, and she can go off and try it for a few minutes. I'll tell you a little bit more about the week of prayer, and then we'll get Vicki to come back, and I'll show her how it's done. Well, I have a little book that you can use for the week of prayer, and hopefully you either picked one up already from the church, or you can get one at the church office, or you can download it online. And it's got five days worth of prayers starting on Monday, which is tomorrow, that you'll be able to use for praying. At the front of this little book, when you get it and you open it up, it's got one saying that's really good. It says, praying with Jesus is not only something that we need in our lives, but it's something that we should want to do. The more we learn about prayer, the easier it becomes. The easier it becomes, the more fun it is. Praying and talking with Jesus should be the best part of our day. And it also talks at the front of the book about where and when to pray. If you're thinking, well, should I pray in the morning? Should I pray at night? Should I pray at lunchtime? And should I pray in my bedroom? Should I only pray at church? It tells you some things like that in the front of the book too. So it's really useful. 
So day one, when you get your book, if you have it now, you can go get it, and you open it up. For day one, it talks about the Lord's Prayer. And you can learn all about the Lord's Prayer and how to pray it on Monday. If you ever run out of things to pray, sometimes we're praying, we're like, okay, dear God, please bless mommy and daddy and my cat. And then you're like, okay, I don't know what else to pray. The Lord's Prayer is a great way to help you because it shows you different things to pray for. So have a look on Monday at the prayer for the Lord's Prayer. And it, I guarantee you, if you use the Lord's Prayer, you won't run out of things to pray for because it kind of gives you suggestions if you follow it. So that's what you're going to do on day one. And every day, somebody on staff, one of the pastors, is going to also give like just a little devotional on the same topic. And your mom and dad are gonna have the same book, but for adults, so you'll be able to do it all as a family. So day one is gonna be the Lord's Prayer. Day two is going to be praying the Bible. That's what we're gonna talk about on Tuesday. And this actually teaches you how to use words in the Bible in your prayers. Because again, sometimes we say, dear God, I hope this happens. And we're not really sure how to pray. So this day on Tuesday, it will teach you how to pray. Now, I have a favorite verse that I want to read to you, and it's in Philippians verse or chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. And this verse says, don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. Ask and pray and give thanks to him. Then God's peace will watch over your heart and your minds, and he will do this because you belong to Christ Jesus. God's peace can never be completely understood. And whenever I start to worry, I like that verse. So I actually wrote that out in a little book, and I have it with me when I pray. So let's say you wanted to pray that verse in the Bible, and you think, how do I do that? How do I turn that into a prayer? Well, let me give you an example. Say you're worried about a math test. What you can do is say, Dear God, you said I'm not supposed to worry. In Philippians 4, 6, and 7, you said don't worry about anything, but instead to pray and give thanks. So today, God, I'm thanking you that I'm going to do well on my math test. And that verse talked about peace. And then you could say, and that your peace is going to watch over my mind and my heart. Thank you that you're going to do this in Jesus' name. Amen. So that's how you take a verse and you turn it into a prayer. So you're going to learn all about that on Tuesday. Praying God's word is a great way to pray. Then on day three, which is Wednesday, you're going to learn about praying when you need help, when you need to do some fighting in the spiritual realm. On Wednesday, we're going to talk about the armor of God and different situations where we need to pray to keep us safe. So that will be really good too. Day four, which is Thursday, you're going to learn about praying for others, like our family and our friends and our teachers and people who don't know Jesus. You guys are really good at that. When, I, when we have kids prayer, I know you guys really like to pray for people who don't know Jesus. So day four, I think you'll do really well at. And then the last day, which is Friday, day five, you're going to be talking, we're going to be talking about praying for ourselves and things that we might need help um, from God with. So that'll be day five. So we've got a whole week of praying to do. And like I said, I've got that special book. You can go online on our website and you can download it and print it, or you can pick one up at the church office and it's got some fun activities in it. There's some things that you can color and some things that you can write down. So make sure you get a prayer book because then as days go on in the year, you can go back to it and you can use some of those same prayers. I mean, really, every Monday, you could pray the Lord's Prayer. And every Tuesday, you could pray scripture if you wanted. You could use it for the whole year. Well, let's see how Vicki did with the puzzle. Let's bring her back and see. Vicki, come on back. How did you do? Let's get our sample back up here again. Whoops. Not so great. I had a tough time. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, Vicki, let's hold it up next to this one. Kind of. Okay, so you got the little part here that should be open because you got that part. And then over here was tricky, wasn't it? Yeah, I didn't want to cut it off because... I know. That's what I thought when I first saw this puzzle. I thought, well, maybe I could like cut it off and tape it. Yeah. But you were supposed to keep it all in one thing. Well, shall we show Vicki and you how it's done? <laughs> Let me show you. Now watch. I hope I can actually do this on camera. Watch me mess it up. Okay, so you're going to make one cut. Like you're going to find the middle of the paper, which is about here. And you're going to make one cut up to the middle on that side. And then you're going to come over here and you're going to make one cut up to the middle. So you've got this little flappy thing right here. Then you're going to turn it over and you're going to make one cut up the middle like this. 
So you've got this part here and this part here. And you know what the trick is? You flip this part like this, and then you fold this down, and there you go. Let me put it back up again so you can uh. see it. And you make it like that. But the key is it's flipping it over when you do it. So that way you get it so that it looks like this. Pretty tricky, huh? That's tricky. So let me do it. Uh, let me just fix this up one more time so that when you show it to your parents, you'll know what you're doing. So you have your paper like this, and you make two cuts on the bottom up to about the middle. And then I'm going to make this one maybe a little tiny bit higher. And then on this side, you just make one cut up the middle. It almost looks like a football thing because you have two cuts there. And then when you take it and you flip it over like that, and that's how you get the flap in the middle. Neat. Pretty fun, eh? It'll be really cool. All righty. Thank you, Vicki, for helping with that. I really, really appreciate okay. it. Now, remember when I said to Vicki, you could ask someone for help? Who could she have asked for help that she didn't think of? Do you know what? She could have asked me, because I knew how to do the puzzle. But do you know what? I wouldn't have thought of that either. I would have thought, okay, who could I ask? But really, I was the one who knew how to do the puzzle. Well, it's the same thing when we pray. Sometimes when we have a problem, we ask our friends, we ask our brothers and sisters, but we forget to ask the very person who can help us. We need to go to God when we have a problem. It's okay to get advice from your friends and your family sometimes, but really, God's the one that we need to ask to help figure out our problems. So this week, when we're doing our week of prayer, I want you to remember to ask God whenever you have a problem, if it's a little teeny tiny problem or if it's a great big problem, he loves to help with our problems. So you remember to ask God for help this week. All right, let me pray for you. Father, I just thank you for the kids today. I thank you for this new year and I thank you that we're going to start this week of prayer. And Lord, I just ask today that you would help them to grow closer to you and learn more about you and to remember whenever they have a problem or they can't figure something out, you're the best one to go to and that they'll have that kind of relationship with you that they can go to you about anything. So Father, I just pray that you bless the kids today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys, thanks for joining us today. And don't forget our week of prayer. See you next week.